Hello, good morning. Hi there. All right, so I had a question this morning. Um, one of my new students was driving around, driving for dollars, and I don't know if he was in his car driving around or if he was uh, driving the internet around, <laughs> you know, like checking out Zillow or checking out Trulia or Redfin or anywhere else, okay? I don't know how he found this house, but it said it was under pre-foreclosure or it was in foreclosure, and I think foreclosure is a bad F word. Okay, it's not a word that I use a lot, just like the other bad F words, and it's not a word that I want you to get really familiar with, and I have five reasons why. Okay, first of all, if you buy a foreclosed house, you have to put money up for that. You either have to be pre-approved or you have to have a pocket full of cash, and most people don't have a pocket full of cash that they can buy a foreclosed property. And I don't care if it's a $10,000 foreclosed property or a $100,000 foreclosed property. Most people just aren't carrying that around in their pocket. Now, yes, I can help you find some creative ways to find that money. Uh, there are plenty of people carrying around ten, twenty, fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000. But most people, unless they are actually like specialized in buying foreclosures, they aren't carrying that money around. Another one of my students found a $14,000 foreclosure last week, and he was super excited, and he was, you know, going to go buy it, and it was going to be amazing, and he had all these plans, and he was practically calling the contractors to decide what they should do with it. And then he went to look at it, and he realized why they were asking $14,000. It needed about $100,000 worth of work, and he didn't want to take on that. And I, I didn't want him to take that on. So foreclosed houses are not something that we're dealing with because they take a lot of money. And my whole stance with lease options and owner financing is you don't need money to buy houses. And you really don't need money to buy houses. You don't need credit. You don't need banks. You don't need any of that. But... If you want to buy foreclosures, you do need money. And that's one reason I stay away from them. Okay, second reason I stay away from foreclosures is when your house gets foreclosed or when your neighbor's house gets foreclosed, it becomes an REO, a real estate owned property. That's how the bank classifies it. The bank says, we now have this real estate. We now own this real estate. It's an REO real estate owned by the bank, okay? And when we talk about REOs, foreclosures, pre-foreclosures, short sales, all of that means that somebody stopped making the payment. And the bank wants their money. The bank is not in the business of being a homeowner. The bank is not in the business of wholesaling houses. The bank wants their money and the bank that owns this house probably isn't somebody that you could go talk to. This bank, this banker, the person who is going to be making the final decision on what the bank will accept is probably in some ivory tower in New York or Kansas or California or somewhere. They have no idea what the market is like in your town. Oh, um, hold on just a second. Sorry, I got to talking so fast I got a little dribble going. Okay, so the banker, the bank who's in charge of this house doesn't know the market in your area. And this house is just another number to them. There's all sorts of processes. There's all sorts of people that have to sign off on it. Once your house goes into foreclosure, yeah, you could buy it in 30 days if you have all the cash. Yeah, you could buy it in 45 days if you had a loan and you were going to be buying it. But it could also take like 6, 8, 9, 15 months to close on this stupid house. And your money is going to be tied up for that whole time. And I don't like some bank or some banker telling me whether or not I can buy this house or not. When I can go find plenty of clearances or plenty of 
um, people that are maybe a month or two behind or not behind at all and they just want to get rid of it. And so that's why I don't fool with foreclosures because I don't want some banker or some bank somewhere else telling me what I got to do and when I got to do it. Don't tell me what to do. Uh, Corey wants to know what's your recommendation on a house that has payments in arrears. If the payments are behind, arrears means that the payments are behind. If the seller is behind on their payments, I don't fool with them. I do not fool with them. Um, I have some students that did a subject to property where they had to catch up two months of the payments. They had to put that money out and they had to catch the payments up. It was two months behind, so it wasn't a lot of money, but it was still that they had to catch those payments up, and I don't do that. If you can see into the future that you're not going to be able to make the payment next month, you barely made the payment this month, you need to call me now before you get behind on payments. If you're a year behind on payments, you are beyond me helping you. Ain't happening? Don't care. One of the like first four or five questions I ask you when you call to say, hey, I want to get rid of my house, is are you behind on payments? And if you say yes, I'm going to say, sorry, not your girl. I'm not dealing with behind on payments because then you get fees and fines and taxes and all sorts of stuff added to it and late fees and everything. No, not dealing with it. Okay, the third reason that I don't deal with foreclosures is because... There are government agencies, and maybe you've heard of Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac, or um, those are the two big ones. But there's probably three or four government agencies that are backing all of the mortgages. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are the big two, right? And then there's a couple others, like the VA has their own foreclosure department. Um, some local banks have their own little foreclosure department that doesn't come into effect with uh, the big banks, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. But Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and this has been my experience, when you put a property in the foreclosure bin, okay, and an agent puts it out on the market in the local MLS or however they're doing that, then, and I think this is only for Fetty, Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac. Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. There's 16 days that that house has to be on the market that an owner occupant has priority bid over an investor. So there's 16 days that every investor in town can go ahead and start looking at this property, but they can't put an offer in on it until the 17th day. And this is a government rule. This is a good government rule law that says that they want owner occupied people to buy the house, to live in the house and enjoy the house, get a mortgage on the house. It's the American dream. Buy this house. But they also know that the investors are like sharks out there. And so they keep them away. They keep them, keep the investors, you know, kind of put back for 16 days so that the owner occupants don't feel pressured to make a decision real fast. You get just a little, little over two weeks to make a decision if you want this house or not. But on the 17th day, those investors start throwing their bids in. And there are professional investors, professionals who, I am getting blown up today. Everybody wants to send me a message when I start Facebook Live. Um, there are professional investors and all they do is go out and buy foreclosures. They have their money continuously rolling into one foreclosure or another and they make their living from doing that. I don't want to deal with those guys. I don't want to wait 17 days. If a house comes up and I want to buy it, I want to buy it that day. I want to be closing on it. I want to be getting, you know, the finalized papers. I want the key to it the next day. I don't want to wait 16 days again for some banker somewhere else to tell me if and when I can buy this house. Oh, hell no. No. Not doing it. Um, there's also, you know, when we talk about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, 
there's a ream of paper. You have to sign so many disclosures and disclaimers and um, you know that this property was in foreclosure and you know that this is that and you know this and that. It is just awful. The process of buying a foreclosure is awful. There is no person-to-person -person interaction with it. Which brings me to my fourth point. Agents. If you want to go and look at a house and it's not in foreclosure and there's an agent working on it, the agent probably has a relationship built up with the people selling it. And that way, if you put your offer in and it's less than what they expected or if it's more than what they expected and there's a, you know, a bidding frenzy going on, there's still some people involved here. You can, you know, tell that agent, hey, this is the plan. This is why I think I should win. But if you're dealing with a foreclosure, there's no people involved. It's all about hitting a mark, hitting a number, hitting a close date, hitting all of these parameters, again, that that banker somewhere else has decided is important. And whether it's important in this community or not doesn't matter anymore. There's no people in it anymore and I live and breathe off the people interaction of buying houses okay I that's why I do owner financing and lease options I can go into somebody's house who is not behind they don't have a really sad sob story they're not you know the traditional desperate motivated seller they just had life happen and they need somebody to help them out and I can swoop in and help them out but my thing about the agents number four I told you yesterday that agents specialize in certain areas of real estate. There are specialized foreclosure agents and there are agents who have gone through lots of continuing education so that they can specialize in foreclosures. They know which documents to do, they know the system, they know how to use the software, they know how and when to talk to the bankers, they have all sorts of stuff that they can do on your behalf. But it basically boils down to they put the right stuff in motion and they just get flooded with every foreclosure that comes down the pike. Any old investor or any old agent will not pick up a portfolio of foreclosed houses. There's probably going to be one or two agents in your town, in your zip code, in your suburb that handle all of the foreclosures. And that's all they do. And I'm not going to say that they've got it easy in real estate, but they don't have to go do normal, hey, I want to list your house kind of stuff. They just have to wait on somebody to get in a bad situation. And I just, I don't like that. There is, in Knoxville, there is a foreclosed agent, Rosemary Durant. She is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And she will help you. She will work with you. She will let you know when, you know, something's about to come up. Or, you know, hey, this thing's on its 15th day. If you want to come look at it, come look at it. You know, she is amazing. She plays by the rules. But she is really smart to know how to use the rules and how to make it work for an investor. She is an amazing, amazing woman. But I'm not sure every foreclosure agent works as hard as she does, knows the ropes as well as she does. And so if you're dealing with a foreclosure, or you're wanting to look at a foreclosure, make sure you're finding that one agent who is specializing in foreclosures and knows the system in and out. I hate to pick on the first-time agents, the first-year agents, the second-year agents, but they just don't have enough experience. They don't have enough bumps and bruises on their record to actually know how to get the deal done in a smooth transition. I know. I don't want people with experience, and the only way to get experience is to get experience. I know. I hear you. But I don't like working with those new agents. Okay, fifth and final reason that I don't want you focusing on foreclosures is because they're in a decline. Now, before you start attacking, 
There's always going to be people that lose their jobs, get divorced, get transferred, have medical expenses. They have something going on. Life is going to happen and they're going to end up in foreclosure. I don't care if it's a good economy or a bad economy. Life happens and people lose their house. But at one point in our history, like a couple years ago, Foreclosures were on the rise. Every other house, every other subdivision, everybody knew where foreclosed houses were. And now, they're still sprinkled about, but the people that have made big money in foreclosures, I don't want to say they've already made it, but those people have already started implementing other strategies to buy houses because they cannot depend on the foreclosures anymore. They're on a decline. And you still have to go in and evaluate it. Like my student that found the $14,000 foreclosure, that would have been awesome if it only needed a thousand or two thousand dollars worth of work, but it needed like a hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff to even make it livable for anybody. Anybody. And at that point, it wasn't a deal anymore. Even if you're looking at foreclosures, even if you got a pocket full of money. You have to use ARV, you have to use MECO, you have to know what the comps are, you have to be smart. I don't want anybody just willy-nilly throwing money into real estate and not having a plan and a system and a strategy in place to know how they're going to make money and how much money they're going to make. Because sometimes, yeah, you can make money, but it won't be worth the effort. So, real quick, five reasons. It takes money to buy foreclosures. Number one. Number two is you have to deal with banks and bankers, and I'm not talking about your little local credit union, your little local, you know, county bank. I'm talking about banks and bankers that live in an ivory tower hundreds of thousands of miles away and have no idea who you are, who this house belonged to, where this house is, or what the economy is like in your neighborhood. Those are the bad banks and bankers that I'm talking about that I don't want to deal with. Three, there's three or four types of foreclosures, and there's three, five, maybe ten different websites where you can find foreclosures, um, but there's a grace period, and no matter which process you use, you got to put money down up front, you got to <clears throat> have your money tied up until somebody decides if and when you can buy this thing. I don't want my money tied up, especially if I know I can buy houses without money. No, thank you. Uh, fourth reason is you have to pay agents. And I'm an agent. I'm a broker. I understand how they make money. But there's other ways to deal in real estate where you don't have to pay anybody commission. And five, they're on the decline. Going into foreclosures now is not a good business strategy unless it's a long term where you want to do one or two and then, you know, make it your business in another whenever foreclosures come back in style. But always remember there's other ways of buying houses that you don't have to deal with foreclosures. You don't. You can do owner financing and you can do lease options. Lease options are like band-aids. They'll go on anything. Whether there's a mortgage or not, you can do a lease option. I don't do for pre-foreclosures either. Those people are behind on their payments and I don't want to pay up their late payments, their fees, their fines, and everything that's been stacked on top of them. I'm not dealing with the F word. No foreclosures around here. Unless it's an apartment complex. Because then, then it's worth that ream of paper. <laughs> okay? Uh, if you have any questions, please send me a message. Let me know that you have questions. If you want to talk about this, if you want to get on a call with me, go to start.whitneynicely.com. I've got plenty of time, and y'all know I can talk about real estate until the cows come home. Okay, so no foreclosures. No foreclosures. No pre-foreclosures, no short sales. None of that. Takes all the fun out of real estate. And I like to put the fun and the funds with a DS back in real estate. So y'all let me know if you have any questions. I've got my group call here in a couple minutes. I gotta go get ready for that. If you want to join my group, Book a call with me. Go to start.whitneynicely.com and let me know 
that you're ready to get into real estate and you want to avoid foreclosures. <laughs> Bye, y'all.